18th. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day. Also a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFN. You go into the newsletters. You'll see it right in the right-hand side. <clears throat> you can get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. Six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 or 22%, and one full year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. <clears throat> now, they all come with the 30-day money-back guarantee, folks, okay? So, you know, you can get a six-month prescription. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't work for you, 29th day, just cancel it. You're going to be able to get all of the great archives that Steve has, the great measurements that he has, all of, all of the above. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, Tom, congratulations. You know, I do Thanks. believe that one person in the world can totally change your life. So I hope that that is what each of you guys do for each that's other. That's a fact. Thank you, man. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're excited. Yeah, yeah. No that, doubt. That's, that's really cool. That's yeah. really very, very cool out there. Totally. So, yeah, you're a perfect segue. I don't know how this works. I mean, we don't, we don't talk to each other, you know, during the day. Yeah. To, hey, what are you going to talk about or what have you? So, of course, it's, it's you know, I, I try to put together a presentation, you know, on Mondays that are relative to what's going on inside the market. So you spent your time there. So it's not like it's that crazy for us to be talking about the two things, the same two things out here. Uh, and so we're going to start with this chart here. We've seen this before in the past. This is the chart that, uh, or a tool that I use that analyzes the directional correlation between two instruments. So here what I'm showing at first, the top is the ES mini and the center is the US dollar index. And what's down below that is the relationship. When a bar is above zero, uh, then we have a directional correlation. They both are moving in the same direction on average. When the bars are below zero, it tells us we have an inverse relationship. One moves higher, the other moves lower. This setting here is for a five-day average. This is the smallest setting I can use is a three period time. You know, you got it for an average, you need at least three uh, um, data points out here. And so this is a five-day average. And what we can see here is that for the most part, there is an inverse relationship between the ES mini and the US dollar index. If we take a look at uh, gold, we can see that in the case of gold since July, gold and the US dollar index have primarily had this inverse relationship. If we go back before then, it was starting to get to be about a 50-50, but ever since July has taken place, we can see that predominantly what we have is a inverse relationship. Now, uh, in the chart here for the US dollar index, I'm showing the uh, retracement level from the highs back in September of 2022, I believe it was. Yeah, 2022 down to the lows in July of this year. So we can see that the 0.618 area, and I think you were talking maybe 107.2. You were looking at something yes. at the 107 yes. area. Yeah. yeah, so we've got two different tools, in essence, that are coming up with this 107-ish type area. If we take a look at silver, because silver took a big hit. Yeah, um, I'm kidding, man. Holy yeah, cow. Yeah. Friday, we had that nice rally when we kicked things off, and then it just continued to sell off. And obviously, you know, it's uh, been moving lower. Now, this snapshot was taken maybe about a couple hours ago or so. So I'm not looking at where silver's actually trading. But what we can see, and this is the important thing, the bottom portion of that chart shows us just simply over that five-day average, that inverse directional relationship that uh, silver has. If we take a look at the uh, U.S. dollar index and its correlation, to light sweet crude because we've had this big rally going on light sweet crude today pulling back it was testing support bottom of profile last that i checked out there but here what we can see when we look at that bottom panel tom it's really a coin toss you know it's 50 50 at best i haven't counted each of the bars but just visually looking you know so i would say that the uh, u.s dollar index isn't a strong influence with regard to light sweet crude much stronger influence with regard to gold and silver and then after that uh the uh, s p 500 so that helps us to understand and really just add data to uh, your earlier discussion about the U.S. dollar index. So we've got that right in front of us. Now, what I've also pulled up is a seasonal chart for the U.S. dollar index using the UUP. For whatever reason, I'm unable to pull up the uh, U.S. dollar index futures contract uh, because we could go back much further. But 16 years is a decent enough time. Now, when we take a look at this, and again, this is the UUP out here, what we can see is that we're right at about a stage here where the U.S. dollar index should top. Now, those people that are long, uh, either the markets, uh, whether the, the equity markets or the uh, metals markets out here, that would certainly be a good thing based upon the uh, directional correlation or inverse, direction, inverse uh, correlation that we have out here. So interestingly enough, if we take a look at this, uh, uh, this cycle here, we'll see that typically, on average, 
uh, the dollar will bottom in the early August, late, late July, early August time frame. And this year, we go take a look at when the dollar bottom was on July 14th. So it's really fitting along. We don't use these folks. We don't use these uh, these levels here uh, to the day. What we look for are patterns that help us identify either top or bottom when that top or bottom is supposed to be forming out here. Uh, if we take a look at the 16 year seasonal cycle pattern out here, uh, this is suggesting a short term top soon. That is, as long as we don't. So what the U.S. dollar index did a few days ago was it, it created a TD9 count top. And that TD9 count top sets up resistance at 106.54. So if the U.S. dollar index closed below 106.54 today, that TD9 count top will still be in place. So it's really going to be important to see whether the U.S. dollar index closes above that. If it does, it negates that signal. Or is it still finding resistance at that level? So we'll know that here uh, relatively soon. And if that daily TD9 count top fails on the U.S. dollar index, well, my price target is around 107.80. Again, that 107.80 and be nothing more than the retracement as we take a look at the very right-hand panel chart here of the monthly chart from the high down to the low. So that's important because if we get that, you and I know that what we're probably looking at here with regard to the equity markets and the metals market is a continued move lower. So it's really important what happens at this battleground. Uh, the U.S. dollar index has a TD9 count top. But each of the equity futures contracts have TD9 count bottoms, or they will unless we get closes below those lower threshold levels. So in the case of the ES mini, that area would be 4277. That would negate that signal. That's not what we're likely to get today, especially with market moving lower with lighter volume. 14586 is the NQ. The Dow and the Russell are the uh, struggling ones here. They could take out those TD9 count bottoms. So if the Dow equity future contract closed below 33,554 and the Russell 2000 equity future contract closed below 1776.30, those patterns would be negated. But the point is right now, we've got a TD9 count top inside the uh, dollar at the, uh, and we have TD9 count bottoms inside the equity future contracts. Now, if these TD9 counts hold, we also have a divergence between the direction is price in the New York Stock Exchange upper panel and then panel that's down two more below it, the advanced decline oscillator, which is making higher lows. That's a divergence pattern that suggests that we prepare for a rally. And lo and behold, if we take a look at the price action today, because we did not have a bottom signal inside of the New York Stock Exchange, guess what today is? Bar number nine of a TD9 count. And that says the New York Stock Exchange should bottom either today or tomorrow, and that should lead to a rally up towards 15,522 out here. In fact, most of the cash indices, Tom, have got either TD9 count or Rhodesman indicator bottoms, and each of those should lead to rallies up towards their oscillator and change line. But the big hurdle for the NQ on any rally tonight, Tom, is going to be what I refer to as the oscillator and change line. And that's right at about the 14,989 level. So that's something for people to uh, watch uh, overnight. So uh, in the end, it's all about the king, baby. And yeah. so for now, we've got to watch that 106.54 for clues as to what the intent of metals and equities are. And you know what's scary, Steve, is that when you brought up last week, because yes. over that 107.80, right, this thing yes. could really go. And what happens, folks, is if that's the case, then yeah. get out of the way, man, of the S&P and gold. I know. Exactly. Have exactly. a great one. Have a safe one, Steve. Appreciate all Thanks, the education. Thanks, Tom. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.